as we discussed, the water molecule can basically act as a nucleophile reacting with a carbonyl molecule to form a hydrate product. Now, water is not the only nucleophile, not the only molecule that can act as a nucleophile. Other molecules can also act as nucleophiles. And one such molecule that we're going to discuss in this lecture is the alcohol molecule. So alcohol can react with our carbonyl molecule to form a hemiacetal. And that hemiacetal can then be transformed into the acetal compound. And this is what we're going to discuss in this lecture. So let's begin by discussing how the hemiacetal is formed and what it actually looks like. So let's suppose we begin with the conjugate base to the alcohol molecule. The conjugate base of the alcohol molecule is known as the alkoxide. So we have the following hypothetical alkoxide on which we have an R group that is an arbitrary hydrocarbon group. Now notice we don't have an H atom and so that means this oxygen will bear a negative charge. That oxygen that bears a negative charge on the alkoxide acts as the nucleophile the Lewis base attaches itself and forms a bond between the oxygen and the carbon of the carbonyl and that displaces the pi bond and places those two electrons in the pi bond on to our oxygen and within this intermediate we have a negative charge on this oxygen. So now this can act as a Lewis base and grab an H atom from a nearby water molecule and basically the final product is known as the hemiacetal. So this is our hemiacetal that is formed when a carbonyl reacts with our alkoxide. Now in this particular case we use the aldehyde for our carbonyl. Now whenever an aldehyde reacts with alkoxide to form the hemiacetal product, this product will be favored at equilibrium. That means at equilibrium we're going to have a lot of this product. But if we replaced a ketone, if we replaced the aldehyde with the ketone, then our product would not be favored and the reaction or the equilibrium of the reaction would lie to the reactant side. Our reactants would be favored at equilibrium if the ketone was used. Now, this is not the only method by which the alkoxide can react with our aldehyde, or more specifically, our alcohol can react with our aldehyde. An acid catalyzed version of this reaction also exists. So instead of using the alkoxide, we use the conjugate acid to our alcohol molecule, and this is this acid here. So basically we have two H atoms attached to our oxygen which bears our positive charge. So this acid reacts with our carbonyl molecule. Once again we use the aldehyde and what happens is the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of the carbonyl molecule grabs this H atom away from this acid forming this alcohol as well as this resonant stabilized structure. In the second step, this alcohol molecule now acts as the nucleophile attacking using its lone pair of electrons on the oxygen to form a bond between this oxygen on the alcohol and this carbon on our carbonyl molecule. And this pi bond is displaced onto this oxygen here. Now, notice we have a positive charge on this oxygen, so we must deprotonate this H atom. So in the last step, we, we basically want to regenerate that acid that we began with, and we also want to form the hemiacetal. So this alcohol takes away this H atom from this oxygen, 
forming our hemiacetal and regenerating this acid molecule, the conjugate acid to our alcohol molecule that we began with initially. So in both cases, we form the same exact product, assuming that we began with the same exact R group and our aldehyde. So these are two identical hemiacetals. So in this step, our alkoxide acts as the nucleophile, and in this step, the alcohol acts as our nucleophile. And these two steps lead to the hemiacetal formation. So the hemiacetal basically contains the two groups that were attached, the carbon of the carbonyl, as well as this alkoxide and this hydroxide. Now, as soon as this product is formed in either one of these two reactions, the reaction will go in reverse. That is, the product will begin to break down and eventually will end up on the reactant side. However, there are two pathways that the reverse process can now follow. One of these pathways will lead back to the aldehyde, the initial starting material, and the other pathway will lead to the acetyl compound. So let's focus on the other pathway. So, let's suppose we form a little bit of the product as well as this particular acid. So now the reaction can now go back in reverse. Now, if this oxygen is protonated, then we're going to follow this pathway in reverse and reform our starting material. But if instead this oxygen on our hemiacetal is protonated, we're going to follow a certain series of steps to form the acetyl compound. So let's follow these steps. So let's suppose our acid, this molecule here, uh, gives an H atom to this oxygen here. So this acts as the base, grabs an H atom, forming this alcohol and forming this good leaving group, the water molecule. Now this water molecule is a good leaving group, meaning this bond between the carbon and the positive oxygen is very weak. And it's so weak that it will basically dissociate and we form in the second step this water water molecule, we still have this alcohol that was formed in step one, and we also have this resin stabilized intermediate on which the positive charge is distributed between this carbon here and this oxygen here. Now, in the next step, this water molecule can act can now act as our nucleophile. It can use its lone pair of electrons on the oxygen to form a bond between this carbon and the oxygen on the water, forming this intermediate ion in which we have a positive charge on this oxygen here. Now, in the final step, we want to regenerate the acid that we began with. So basically, an alcohol molecule grabs this, uh, this H atom away from this oxygen, forming the final product as well as our regenerated acid that is not shown. And this final product is known as the acetyl molecule. So, what's the difference between the hemiacetal and the acetyl? Well, in the hemiacetal, one of the groups attached to our carbon of the initial carbonyl is a hydroxide. But in this case, all the hydroxides have been replaced with alkoxide groups, the RO groups. So this is called the acetal, and this is called our hemiacetal. So once again, we see that when our alcohol is mixed in with a carbonyl compound, for example, an aldehyde, we can form a hemiacetal. And as soon as we form the hemiacetal, the reaction can go in reverse, and two pathways can be followed. One of the pathways basically leads to the initial starting material 
uh, in which case this group is protonated and this group basically leaves and we form this product or this reactant here. The other pathway is followed when this O is protonated and we follow these series of steps to form our acetyl molecule.